Hey everyone, welcome to the Sports Deli Podcast. For Dr. J and Coach K, I am Hootie Hoot. We're honored that you're sharing space with us today to discuss some of the tough conversations that deal with the intersections between race and sports, mental health, leadership, and equality. And if you ever have a question, feel free to shoot us an email to thesportsdeli at gmail.com and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. But for now, whether you're in the kitchen, working out or driving, please grab your favorite deli sandwich or bagel and your favorite beverage and let's do this together in the Sports Deli. In our commitment to pay homage and honor all of those past and current players from the WNBA during this historic 25th season. We're so honored on this 26th day of National Barbecue, National Mental Health Awareness and Jewish American Heritage Month to welcome future WNBA player Michaela Pivik to the Sports Deli Podcast. And for Dr. J and Coach K, I'm Hootie Hoot. I'm flying solo today, repping the Motor City, my hometown and my second home, San Diego. Michaela attended Linwood High in Washington State, where not only did she help her team to a state basketball title, but as a track and field athlete, she won a state title in the javelin throw. When she attended Oregon State, she was rated as the highest rated player in program history at the time, holding a five-star rating and listed as the number 24 player in the nation by ESPN. She shares a birthday with Allison Felix, tra- track and field star, White Chocolate, Jason Williams, and okay. the late Lenny Bias. While in Corvallis, she was a two-time Pac-12 selection, and as a senior, she averaged nearly a double-double, tallying 14.9 points and 9.3 rebounds per game. At 5'10", she was one of the most productive players in Oregon State women's basketball history, finishing with numerous double-doubles and near triple-doubles. She didn't start her career at OSU as a point guard, but later transitioned to one when the team needed her, which we'll talk about later, as she didn't play the point since she was in middle school. She also threw the javelin at Oregon State and performed the rare feat of being a two-sport athlete at the Division I level in the Pac-12. She was one of nine national finalists for the 2020 NCAA Woman of the Year, and in 2020, she was drafted 25th overall by the Atlanta Dream, and this year she was in the Minnesota Lynx training camp after playing in Spain. She continues to work out in hopes of possibly getting picked up for this season, and if not, prepare herself for the next calling, which will be either overseas or for the 2022 WNBA season. She's volunteered her entire life, and we can't wait to hear all about some of those incredible experiences in high school and at Oregon State just before the pandemic, and she majored in biohealth science and graduated in just three years and hopes to one day be a dermatologist. After today's podcast, she's going to a cycling class with her dad. You can find her online on Instagram, for those of you listening to the podcast and not with us live on IG, at Michaela. Michaela's with a K and a Y. Michaela Pivik. Pivik is P-I-V-E-C. And uh, a huge shout out to Bort, to Courtney Bowerman, who you know from Seattle, who mentioned you in passing and, and uh, you're gracious enough and uh, we're honored that you're you know, joining us here in the Sports Deli, so, so welcome. Hey, thank you for having me. You've done extensive research and pulled out some facts <laughs> that I haven't heard in a long time. So, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I'm to reminisce about some high school days and my days at Oregon State. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so there's a lot of common things that we talk about in the, in the Sports Deli, but, but, but everyone's a little bit different. Um, and I'm always curious, especially with women, uh, growing up because, you know, with the, whatever generation you're, you're in, whether it's X or Y or millennial, um, more instant gratification. And there's just a lot of different styles of coaches. And, you know, a lot of times on the women's side, which we're not at 50% yet, right. As we approach the 50th anniversary of title nine next year. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, participation is still not where we want it to be. And not only did you obviously participate as we were talking before we went live in, in AAU stuff in the summers, and obviously that that's real big now in terms of getting exposure and, you know, playing in high school, winning a state championship and those types of things. But how, how did you navigate getting involved and then really taking your game to, to the highest level? Yeah, well, I think um, like when you look at look at me, I'm not like 
the biggest player out there. I'm not six, five. I'm not necessarily the fastest. Um, but I feel like I've worked on trying to eliminate or reduce any weaknesses I have to be a really solid and well-rounded player. Um, and I think like the things that I excel at and, and stand out at are rebounding. And then also I ran cross country and track in high school. So my endurance is really good. Um, and I battle a lot with my sister. My sister runs a cross country track at Boise state. So I have my fair share of uh, beat downs from her in long distance. And trying <laughs> to, uh, but she pushed me a lot. Um, and so that was, I think a strength of mine. And so I'm not like the fastest, but I'm relentless on, on the boards that can keep and continue um, going uh, longer than a lot of people. Um, and then I think just continuing to work on um, my skill uh, to separate me in those areas that I may not be the best athlete, but I try to um, maximize my potential um, and do everything I can in my control to get as much of I can as I can out of me. So when you say you're relentless and, and you're maximizing your potential, um, you know, some of our listeners are kids or girls and, and uh, you know, it's frustrating when, when you're young. Did you face some of those frustrations and, and, and how did you get through, you know, some of those challenges? Yeah, I think um, now too, uh, getting um, cut from the municipal, can you hear me okay? Cause I can't hear you on, on Zoom, is this okay? Yeah, you're good. Okay, perfect. Um, but I think each, each chapter as you transition from me from high school to college and then from college to pro, there's those obstacles and um, those adjustments you have to make to uh, be competitive at the next level. I know coming out of high school, um, I didn't, um, like you're very dominant your senior year of high school and then you transition to college and there's a lot of really good players around you. You're trying to figure out what exactly you can contribute and what is your exact niche within that um, whole team. So I think figuring out um, A, what um, I do really well and, and being self-aware of what I do really well to maximize that, but also figuring out like what specific role um, you need to improve on to contribute to your team. I think especially as I went from like um, college to now the pros, trying to figure out um, exactly what my one or two things that I do better than other people because the program is so much more like this is your role and very particular about what they're looking for. Um, and trying to figure out what I can contribute to each team um, to, to get like excellent in one area versus like very good in four or five. Um, so right now I'm trying to focus on getting my release a little bit quicker um, and my shooting mechanics um, to be able to yeah. sell really as a shooting guard um, at, at this next level. Um, so that's what I'm focusing on this off season and will continue to develop going forward. I feel like I do a lot of other things really well. Um, and now just trying to fine tune that shot um, to be a knockdown three point shooter with a, with a quicker release. Sports Deli is sponsored by Sport RX, the leader in sport prescription eyewear. You can find them online at sportrx.com. And don't forget to enter the code DELI10 at checkout for your special 10% discount. And now back to this incredible interview right here on the Sports Deli. Yeah, I think it's fascinating because you're not alone, right? Every great player at the at the top of their game in college or or in the pros, they're always working on something, right? LeBron has worked on something every year. Diana's worked on something every year. She's out for about a month right now with a busted sure. sternum, but yeah. yeah. But you know, it, you just at some point um, you, you sort of plateau, and then you have to really, like you said, figure out your niche and and work on each thing. It you know it takes probably three to six months to really get get good at it and then feel comfortable executing it in a game but yeah. I, I'm, I'm just fascinated that you're 510 mm -hmm. and uh you know did you just say uh, most rebounds go to the opposite side of where the shot is taken from and then you just you know were were you and you're strong right it's not like you're you're like me like buck 05 wet at 510 and you know you're going to get pushed under the basket like you're strong right you're good center of gravity but is it just it, what, what's the biggest takeaway? Is it, is it re relentlessness? Is it, uh, you have smart basketball IQ, obviously you do, you can't play in the PAC 12 without that, but what, what do you, uh, credit, you know, your trust in yourself, believing and betting on yourself most to, because you, there's a lot of cliches that we just talked about, but, but how, how do you get there? Do you have good counter moves around the basket? Cause that's what I teach as a pro skills trainer besides shooting, you know, yeah. you can't just be a one tool player, right? You have to be able to, to, 
to stick it. Your footwork has to be better. Your release has to be quicker now that you're in, trying to, you know, play in the W. But but what yeah. what is it about your your game that that allows you to have success in so many different areas? Yeah, I think um, well, a the thing that I think stands out the most with my game is like my mid range and my rebounding. Um, and so rebounding, yes, I'm relentless. I go after almost every rebounds. Um, but it's also like anticipating. Um, so anticipating knowing your teammates to know when they're likely to shoot. Um, so if you know, like it's passed up three point shooter, it's going up. So you got to start crashing or, um, your post is getting into their go-to move. So understanding your teammates, understanding what they're likely to do. And when that shot's likely to go up to beat your defender, uh, for position. Um, and then just watch a lot of film. Yeah. Watch a lot of film. I've started to watch in college, like high school, I didn't watch any film. Like we'd go (laughs) watch watch this film in high school. (laughs) Yeah. We'd we'd go to watch games, watch teams play, but wouldn't as much analyze what other teams are doing. We'd focus on like ourselves. Um, and then college watched a ton of film, Oregon state. And then most recently just starting to watch more and more WNBA and NBA games and trying to pick up like where the shots are coming from, um, from the guard and defensively, um, they're in, in training camp, defensive rotations are so much different than high school. And so totally. in college, uh, too. Yeah. So trying to read what they're doing and try to like find who the best defenders are and see what makes them successful. So it's trying to pick up on little things and observing them more and more uh, through those games that I'm watching. So is that the biggest thing you picked up? So obviously there's probably an extra one or two rotations at the pro level, right. In terms of defensively, and then uh, just being able to get your shot off mid range and from three, a little bit quicker. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like my mid range is pretty solid um, relief and I get my pizza under me. It's, when it's a little bit from deeper and then also catch and shoot three release time. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, uh, there's no substitute for those, those hours and those reps. So you just keep getting those up and, and uh, you know, you'll you'll be on. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, So talk about your time. Where else were you looking besides uh, Oregon state? Did you want to stay in the Northwest or where else were you looking? I was open, um, but I had, I went to, three official visits. I uh, went to Oregon State, Stanford, then University of Washington. I actually went to my University of Washington visit with Destiny Slocum, who ended up being wow. my Oregon State teammate for three years. Uh, so a little wow, fun back that's there. Great. Yep. So uh, how was your visit with Tara? Tara, it was really, it was a good visit. Um, I think it obviously pushed academics because uh, that's what they stand out, yeah. stand out with. Um, very good team. Um, they came to the table a little bit later um, and offered yeah. very at, at the very end of my um, like um, decision window. Um, so yeah. I established pretty good connections with the other coaching staffs and um, just felt like Oregon State was the best place for me to develop as a player and as a person um, and knew that I felt like if I wanted to go to medical school, I could go there through either route. Um, so yeah, and you started your master's, right? Your senior year? Yeah, and then I finished, um, so finished master's um, at Oregon State Biochemistry. Yep, done with school. Yes, <laughs> let's uh, go. Uh, yeah, people they always ask, like, what do you get your master's in? I say, like, biochemistry and biophysics, and people always call me a nerd, but I liked science, right. and I liked math a little bit more than history and English, so people can say what they want. Yeah, they can say what you want, but it's probably the reason why uh, your IQ is also, you know, it's funny. I was talking to a guy today that was in the 68 Olympics, Lou Scott. He was my high school coach in cross country. And cool. he, he was in the Olympics with, um, uh, you know, the whole protesting situation that happened in the 68 Olympics. And wow. uh, he was just saying, you know, sometimes you're just born with something and other things can, de- can develop. But, you know, uh, obviously, you know, um, some people just have the gift to see things before they happen, and yeah. uh, you know, you just have, then you just have to work on the skill set, skill set stuff, and and then that's where your game sort of evolves, you know, to that next level, wow. and um, and then so what what else in terms of angles and positioning and explosiveness are those things that you're working on also to to help improve your game? Yeah, another thing that uh, learning camp or was highlighted more camp was like defensive angles. Um, so a lot of oh, times yeah. in, um, in college, we'd angle somebody to their weekend or angle somebody to the baseline in, in, um, the pros, you can't really force somebody to either way. Cause they're so good right or left. Um, yeah. and so trying to keep people in front a little more by taking more, um, like side to side angles versus taking a step back first, 
Um, so right. trying to uh, force and dictate more defensively than normal. Interesting. So is this a turn and sprint or is this still sliding? More um, slide, like the first step sliding to stay in front versus a turn and sprint if you get beat. Ideally, slide um, quickly one way or another. Um, but if not, if you're beat, then have to turn and sprint. You have to turn and sprint afterwards. Interesting. That's cool. Well, you, <laughs> what ex what great experiences um, yeah. so you know, was, to, to have been there. Yeah. It was great. Uh, obviously very disappointing at the end of it. Yeah. Um, and like realizing how few spots and opportunities there are. Um, but I felt like it was a great opportunity for me each day after, after practice, they'd come in and they'd have a practice mm -hmm. film of each of the, if each of the days. So I'd watch the practice, oh, nice. take notes on whatever the coaches were saying or telling other people. Um, so I really learned a lot uh, during that experience. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, and, and I know we talked a few times just about, you know, it's obviously a, you know, you've had so much success. And then when something like that happens, it's obviously disappointing, but it's, um, it's just a way for you to shift paradigms and refocus. And, you know, yeah. it's just like anything, there, there's no guarantee of anything even down the road, but you know, you, you know, that if you put yourself in a better position, right. By improving things and maybe even going back overseas and, you know, um, showing them that you've evolved. And, you know, I know Aislinn Koenig uh, from Canada, you know, she played yeah. uh, over in Switzerland. I think she's from uh, NC state. She went mm -hmm. overseas and killed it. And, you know, she's a knockdown shooter, like, from the jump like that's always been her thing yeah. and she didn't make the liberty uh and it's, it's just tough you know that's and that's it leads to the other point about expansion and the most frustrating one of the most frustrating things is the the uh, smaller number of teams in the nba and the sh smaller roster sizes which is just i don't understand why the collective bargaining agreement didn't include you know either three additional players or you yeah. know uh something to expand the rosters but it, it's coming yeah. Uh, it's definitely it's coming. Progress. I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. Progress is definitely being made. Yeah. So that's cool. And so, so what are your workouts like typically? Uh, do you have two a days right now or did you take a little break and now you're back at it? Are you waiting for a call possibly? Like, are you, so could anyone call you now? Or are you still the property of the links? How, how does it work now? Yeah. Not property of the links. Theoretically, anybody could call me up. Uh, hey, it's just like Callan joined. What's up, Callan? Um, What's up, Callan? Good friends from oh, AU. Hey, let's uh, go. That's what yeah. I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, so no links, no rights to, to links, but could any team pick me up theoretically if they get injured or if they uh, have a COVID positive test, um, yep. anything like that. Um, so right now working out uh, last week, um, played a couple open gyms. So I was a practice player at Western Washington. Um, so nice. I got negative COVID test there, got um, vaccinated, fully vaccinated. So able to practice Sweet. with them and then. Um, we just went yesterday as well. So Monday, Tuesday this week played and then lifting three days a week. Um, and then also when I can getting cycling with my dad. Um, so he's on a weight loss journey. So Ooh, um, trying nice. to be his uh, accountability partner as much as possible. That's cool. Well, like I told you uh, off, off air, I got two moves for you. Okay. And they'll, 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 they're sure fires. You ask any of my former players, I've been teaching one of the moves for 30 years. It's uh, replicated from Kevin Johnson, uh, played for the Phoenix Suns and no one uses it in the NBA. Some people use a shimmy version of it. It's not the same. And then the Steve Smith, which is the fake spin. And uh, he only used that one move his entire time in the NBA. So that will, if, if that's something that you think can help your game, just to create space, take space away you know, help you with those side threes or step back threes. Do you have videos um, of them or how do you usually teach them? All on IG. Yep. All on IG. And then uh, anything I can do, you know, just for, you know, half hour or whatever, just let me know. I'm, I'm down to show it to you. I got court right outside my, my house and cool. anything we can do to support you and, and your dream to helping your game evolve. You know, we're all about it. Um, so talk, tell us a little bit about, yeah, you're welcome. Of course. Um, Anyone that knows Bort and Bort's family. So, you know, your family, just like that. Oh, um, yeah. We love Bort. Bort, Bort was Bort, Bort. We call her Bort. Did you call her Bort too? Did she tell you you call her Bort? No, usually it's Courtney. Yeah. We call her Bort. We, I don't even know why the nickname came up, but if she listens to this Bort, we love you. Um, but um, I started doing the private stuff right around when she was playing with another friend of mine who ended up going overseas to Spain also coincidentally in Germany 
And so, um, you know, it's a lot of subjective stuff, right? When you're working on, you know, against ghost drills or against cones, or, you know, you're just working on change of speed and change of direction, you know, you, you don't know <laughs> if the carryover into games is going to work. Yeah. You know, so that's why you need to try it against people that are better than you. Or when you go to Western Washington, try it every time you can you pick up games and, you know, in the park or whatever, you have to try this stuff to see if it's, you know, going to work in a game, you know? And so it was interesting working with her because uh, she couldn't get the ball to the rim from three and she wasn't dipping far enough. She wasn't bringing the ball down enough and her rhythm was off and she was frustrated and she was fighting it and fighting me. And, and finally, after a couple months, the the rhythm got better and the dip got better and the timing got better you know board small right she's like five foot she's tiny and she was knocking them down like it was nothing so you know speed you got to get the shot off uh, by at least 0.7 seconds Mm -hmm. and if you can do that um then that's half the battle right because when i went to WNBA and nba clinics from these coaches they said the only difference is your footwork and how quickly you can get your shot off because everybody can shoot everybody can take it off the bounce you know everyone's got good mid-range and it's really just about you know quickness and separation yeah. so that's cool well i i know you're working hard and, and you always have and and um uh it's cool to see people even through adversity continue to work on their game and stuff like that and and i, I think you and aislin definitely i know there's a lot of other people got cut also but yeah. um a you, know, you do players. a lot of things better. Yeah, you do a lot of things better. And sometimes just timing and the fit of things and, and, and salary cap matters sometimes, you know, for the for the teams, for the organizations. But, you know, you do a lot of things better than than Dijonet, for example, you know, and she, but, she, you know, she made it. She, yeah. you know, she did some good really situation. good things. And, and she yeah, made a, a situation. I was watching the game yesterday, kind of get sun, I think, versus the storm. Yeah. And she had a big yep. uh, reverse layup to tie it up late. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So, and she's been in those pressure situations. So those types of things help also, you know, and she's got added motivation for not getting that foul call and things like that, you know, so you just never know what drives people, you know, you're going to be livid about that (laughs) forever kind of thing, but it just, it's always there, you know, your why change. Sports Deli is sponsored by City Lokes, C-I-T-Y-L-O-C-S. You can find them online at citylokes.com where you can go and make your own personalized license plate hats. They're so cool. You got to check them out. And don't forget to enter the code the Sports Deli at checkout for your special 10% discount. And now back to this incredible interview right here in the Sports Deli. So tell us a little bit about your your commitment to community service, which is it's amazing. You, you know, you started some things and uh, tell us if you're continuing those things and what, what that was all about, and why you're so passionate about that. Yeah, so a big part of my time at Oregon State was uh, community service uh, endeavors, and I think a couple of the biggest things that like led me to do that was uh, Eric Eli, one of our assistant coaches, um, then he became kind of like the community community liaison, um, where he would bring in, like, there's a place called Stony Brook Assisted Living, so he would have, like, wow. 25 to 30 elderly people come to our game, and they would, like, bus them there. Um, and give him tickets. And then he'd also like get us involved in boys and girls club. And so my freshman year just kind of dipped my toes in the water. And I was like exposed to this and realized how much uh, the Corvallis community supported Oregon State Athletics and specifically women's basketball. They'd come in, there's all these people cheering you on. Crowds are crazy. Yeah. And we'd have this thing called the five minute mingle after the games and where everybody think like Ooh. COVID kind of wrecked this, but they'd bring everybody down to the court and they'd interact with all the players and they'd get uh, like all the little girls would get signatures from the players. Um, and so just to see that support was like, okay, how can we do something for them? Cause um, we know like how much of a impact we can make and how much of a, um, plat- a big platform and influential platform we have as student athletes. Um, and so oh, no. uh, one of my teammates, Destiny Slocum um, and I started a community service club at Oregon state within the athletic department. Um, Cause so many of the teams like did community service but they were uh, fragmented. So like baseball do their own thing, softball do their own thing, basketball do their own thing. So we try to come up with events where everybody could do stuff together across teams. And so we'd have um, three a year, like one per academic quarter where we'd um, create an event, invite all these different athletes to come and then just uh, be involved and give back to the community. So we did like a, a scone making event where we had one of the boosters like open their house where we made scones, delivered it to the homeless shelter, <laughs> like a cookie That's cool. making event. Um, we had like a, everything cookie with I don't know like nuts um granola um chocolate chips white chocolate macadamia nut like and everything in the kitchen sink 
cookie. We had That's regular right. chocolate chip, OG, <laughs> um, had sugar cookie. So we had all those and, and delivered that. Um, and then probably my favorite one, um, we did a Chuck E. Cheese-like night where at Boys and Girls Club, there was a donor that donated over $1,000 in prizes. And so they had like gift wow. cards. We went to Costco, got all these different big um, food items, fruit snacks, uh, granola That's bar, so cool. peanut butter. And so we had um, student athletes uh, at like 10 or 12 different carnival games, like mini golf. Wow. Um, we always had to have the basketball one in there. So we <laughs> yes, had right. a free throw contest, uh, bowling, and a couple other like maybe fishing um, for one. We have like, oh, yeah. to get a random item back. So we had a whole bunch of different um, like carnival games and the kids would come in and um, at each of the carnival games based on how they did, they would get beaver bucks back, like these little beaver bucks. And then they could spend that's those beaver bucks to the prize table. So Dustin and I were like handing awesome. out Like Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you don't have to <laughs> That's anything. so cool. So that was one of my favorite things. That's right. Um, and just, I think, um, understanding at Oregon State, I wasn't sure how long my platform as a student athlete would be. And so I tried to yeah. I'd do what I could to make an impact on people. Because I remember when I was a kid, my dad would take me to dad and daughter's day at um, University of Washington. And so I remembered how much I looked up to those girls playing and just wanted to uh, be that for someone else too. Totally. That's, that's cool. And sort of speaking upon that, um, obviously you weren't with the dream last year, you opted out and then, you know, you were with the link. So you, you've tasted it a little bit, but I'm curious about your opinion about, um, you know, obviously Liz Cambage has been in the news a couple times, once last year about mental health, and then this year about, it's, it's not to minimize it or to justify it, but maybe understand it, and it's an opportunity to uh, keep conversations going, and I've said on the show many times that anything short of death, uh, even if it's ignorant or in the heat of the moment, that it's an opportunity to um, have people come together to yeah. have a conversation, which I think in the end, you turn maybe what's perceived, which is a negative, and turn it into an educational, teachable moment kind of situation. And um, so, you know, when you see something like that, um, you know, were there any conversations while you're in camp about the continued push as the W has been at the forefront for uh, social injustice? Obviously, the election was largely, largely impacted by the dream last year you know, changed two outcomes of senatorial runoff races. Yeah. Um, the owner of the Atlanta Dream was forced out as a result of the way, That's the gosh. approach. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, Kelly Leffler was forced out and stuff. So, but, um, you know, when you heard those comments, you know, were you like so sick of people talking about women that way? Or were you like, look, I understand it was in the heat of the moment. You know, Coach Miller's a good guy. He's been doing this a long time. I'm glad Liz spoke out just like when the W, uh, the NCAA uh, tournament was going on, the differences in the weight room, <laughs> you know, yeah. like things like this happen. And, you know, I don't necessarily want to, you know, make light of it, but at the same time, um, you know, yeah. women deserve not only equality, but, you know, a seat at the table and to change what is the first thing that comes out of people's mouths in the heat of the moment you know it shouldn't have been something about her being 300 pounds you know yeah. it should have just been like separation of a she's not a guard she's a big like you know go around her you know like use your quickness to your advantage you know yeah. so that what what comes out of people's mouths these these unintended microaggressions or um just things that they came out of your mouth first for a reason yeah and that's yep. just the, how we've sort of evolved. And we, that's the shift that we're, you know, hoping to change. So, you know, what, what is a long winded question, but what, what are your thoughts on that? I think uh, a touching on the mental health part uh, first, um, I was part of a campaign at Oregon state called the damn worth it campaign, uh, which used sports as like a vehicle to uh, shed light and shine light on the awareness of uh, mental health struggles within athletes within um, all across um, campus um, just uh, like, you know, say it's okay to not be okay and realize that just because you uh, may have a mental health issue or you're struggling for a little bit doesn't mean you're weak, doesn't mean anything's wrong. It's just like, okay to acknowledge and, and talk about it. Um, and so I think that was a great way to use sport to uh, bring light on that. And I think 
Um, yeah. WNB players last year did a great job of using the platform they had to try to make an impact. And they, they saw the problems that uh, they wanted to change and they used their voice to try to um, create momentum and, and create some change with, with what they were able to do. Um, so I applaud them for everything they do. I know it's not easy to uh, speak up, especially on some of these very controversial um, topics where you say one wrong thing and you could lose a lot of viewership um, and um, understanding that they were more, um, what was more important to them was making the change and um, in creating uh, that change that they needed to see and really wanted the problems addressed than losing potential viewers. So I thought that was bold of them and, and um, uh, very, very good for them to do. Well, not only creating awareness, right, but the strength in numbers, because in the old days, you'd lose not only viewership, but you would lose uh, endorsement opportunities. Yeah. It, was a viola- it was a violation of the collective bargaining agreement to do certain things or wear certain clothes or take a stand on something. And the, the power that not only the NBA and uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, not playing in games, um, protesting, uh, Obama got involved. You know, Sue Bird leading the charge, you know, one of your favorite players of all time. Go Sue. Um, go Sue. That's right. Um, you know, j- just the collective effort and the, and the power uh, that I felt just, you know, the, the optics mm-hmm. of not only uh, impacting an election, impacting an owner being forced out, impacting speaking out about mental health, impacting speaking out about social injustice and how the conversation is continuing 15 months later, which is the longest stretch that I remember, and I'm twice your age, you know, and and, um, more white people speaking out more than I ever remember, which I think is arguably the most important thing because we've been complicit. Uh, We've not fought against anti-racism because we don't think it's an issue that, you know, affects us but in locker rooms and in sports you and i both understand that that's very different and if if society could sort of follow in those footsteps of locker rooms and teams and how we get through things for a common person uh, for a common purpose and 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 the some of the parts are greater than the parts themselves you know it's it's a it's a wonderful wonderful example you know to follow Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. It's cool to see um, all those sports teams taking a stand um, and like people realizing that their voice uh, makes a huge impact, not just NBA, but also WNBA too. Have you had any conversations with former teammates or, um, you know, in in your um, training camp time, just about these things, you know, like just. A lot of it focused on like the the NCA weight room disparities. Um, that Man, was every, I heard everybody talking about that. I heard about like my friends crazy. and family, like um, team, like basketball teammates and just seeing like right in front of you. Um, it's the same thing, like men's and women's um, NCA weight rooms. And then also the foods and the welcome packages and the gifts. And Everything. I understand a little bit like NBA versus WNBA the contracts never going to be the same that there'll probably never be equality, but there can be progress, but the NCAA um, is a nonprofit and they need to um, have more equal um, showings. It's just disrespectful uh, that they thought somebody uh, wouldn't show that, especially Instagram, all these different social media posts that it was going to be found out. Um, So glad they took strides to try to equalize it later and address what went wrong um, but the fact that happened in the first place was just um you know uh kind of slapped the face um and we talked about yeah it was some people um but like a lot of the women's basketball players in the side were just like okay yeah we usually see you know men's players or uh or football players you know getting getting more um they have bigger revenues so that's why it was justified but seeing like the uproar of all um kind of everybody else that maybe hasn't seen the insides of NC athletics getting kind of an uproar in terms of inequalities was like, okay, we actually, yeah, that, that should be um, more equal. Um, so I'm just saying, okay, yeah, it's just because the revenues are different because of the nonprofit um, that NCA is. Totally. Yeah. And, and there's only, only one thing that people in positions of power 
-hmm. typically white people hate more than lawyers and that's social media and the power of social media if it speaks to nothing else Mm -hmm. that that weight room got fixed in a day (laughs) let's go and it was, it was cool awesome. to see all the different uh, corporations we wanted to donate, like Orange Theory Fitness, like Dick Sporting Goods came in um, with uh, support in any way they could. Yeah, it was so that that part was so great in the end, you know, what ended up happening. And uh, and people aren't afraid to speak up anymore. Like the people that laid the foundation for for decades now, uh, whether it's about social injustice or anything else. People are, people are not hesitating at all to tweet about it, to show it, and it's just not going to be the same anymore, and that's, that's a good thing for sure. Sports Deli is sponsored by PSK. You can find them online at lids.com, pskcollective.com, tjmax.com, walmart.com, and now Kohl's Department Store at Kohl's, Kohl's is K-O-H-L-S, Kohl's.com. They have some incredible women's athletic wear that's all inclusive. And again, you can find them online at five different locations lids.com, pskcollective.com, tjmax.com, walmart.com, and Kohl's.com. And now back to this incredible interview right here in the Sports Deli. So, where do you see yourself? Uh, in the next six to 12 months. Six to 12 months. Okay. Timeline. Um, in September, leaving for Spain. Gotta go again. Okay. Cool. Different team, same country. So I'll have to brush up with my Spanish uh, big time. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. And I'll be on uh, Barcelona. Where are you going to be? Not Barcelona. It's a very, it's like a mountainous city called Liceo de Urgil. Probably. Oh, cool. It, um, but it's on like the border of, the, of France and Spain. Um, so pretty, like maybe two hours from Barcelona. This was That's a team awesome. that one of my former Oregon State teammates played for, and she had really good things to say about it. Um, so I wanted to That's give awesome. it a chance and, and um, competed against this team last year and really liked their effort and just the way they conducted themselves. So are you playing positionless? Or is that what you were looking for? Or are you going to try and play point and combo? You know, what, what, what do you want? Probably what you, um, yeah, yeah. two, three, and then um, if needed, a little bit of one, depending on if their point guard gets in foul trouble or needs a breather, um, but mostly probably two, three. Yeah. Rock that sucker back and forth and, you know, like let him know, Hey, you want to, you, you want to mess with fire. You're about to get burned up here too. <laughs> Let's go. I love it. Wait, are you a trash talker or are you a silent assassin? I'm pretty silent assassin. Yeah. Um, people have talked to me that I need to get my trash game, um, trash talking game up, but it doesn't, doesn't come naturally. So it's something I really had to try to improve on. Some of my friends are really good. So I've been, (laughs) some of my friends are really good. I, I, I'm really good too. And you know, it's funny though, Steph Curry was pretty quiet, right. For a long time. And then they started punking him and he got sick of it. And then he started putting that mouthpiece sideways and, you know, he just, his whole persona changed about five years ago, right? Because he was sick of it. He was sick sick of people calling him soft and all this stuff. And I don't think you'd ever be called soft, but, um, you know, I I think there's a balance, right? You got to come out of your comfort zone a little bit and a little stare down, you know, or cross the line. You got to hold your own for sure. You got to hold your own. Yeah. There's no sports deli is sponsored by Moolah Kicks. Moolah is M-O-O-L-A-H, like money, Moolah, and kicks like shoes, one word. You can find them online at moolahkicks.com. And it's the first ever female only brand basketball shoe. So it's a shout out to the basketball street culture and it is also about fighting social injustice and gender inequality worldwide and here in the United States. And again, you can find them at moolahkicks.com. And now back to this incredible interview right here in the Sports Deli. All right, let's let's buckle our seatbelts. Let's let's get ready to do this rapid fire here. Are you ready? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So I'm saying yes, no, these yes, no questions, or it's one word answers. Some, some, some are, some are, and some are just like questions. Okay. So there's a, there's a mixture. All right. Take that deep breath. Let me see. Let me see that game face. Like you've been here a thousand times before. <laughs> there you go. That's what I'm talking about. Good. Wait, do you meditate and do, and do some yoga or do you, is that a part of your regimen? 
Um, I did a lot when I was in Spain, like meditating like oh, wow. five, five minutes in the morning and then yoga as well. Wow, yeah. that's sick. Visualization? Yep. I did in uh, my junior year of college. I did a lot because I was I, sh- I was shooting terrible from the free throw line. Uh, I missed, uh, t- I was at the line. We were down one um, with like eight seconds left and I missed both. And so after that- wow. I was struggling for a little bit um, and then somebody recommended visualization to me and uh, that same year, um, this was probably like December, um, I started doing visualization like Christmas break, started doing it before Pac-12 play that started in early January and then Mm. uh, made 34 straight during Pac-12 play, 34 straight free throws um, to get my free throw percentage down from very very like hack-a-shack type numbers to respectable. Wow. Um, So yeah, I think I definitely uh, realized the power of visual- visualization and just like getting those reps in. Cause I was getting lots of reps um, like physically, um, but just getting that, I think more belief and mindset through visual- visualization really helped me my junior year. That's awesome. Did you change your, your angle uh, or your setup or your ritual? Nothing else, just visualization. That was the only thing. Just the visualization. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's cool. Love to see that evolution. Okay, black, orange, or white shoes. Black, orange cut. Too many Oregon State and don't go full <laughs> yeah. And my uh, favorite feet really bad. So black. Say that again. My feet like sweat really badly. Um, and so oh, like, really white it like turns brown. And my teammates can wow. say yeah. Not interesting. Mm-hmm. Definitely black then. Uh, yeah. favorite music genre. Ooh, uh, religious Lauren Daigle, that gospel. Mm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Wait, can you can you sing? No, you don't want to hear that. Nope. So, are you singing? But if you're in the car by yourself, are you singing? Oh yeah, like in the shower. In the <laughs> <club>. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> That's classic. Biggest rival in the Pac-12. Oregon and Oregon, just because there's a bad blood plus. Stanford was also really good, but the Oregon probably. How was it playing against Sabrina? She's a competitor. Very high I basketball IQ. Yeah, very oh. high basketball IQ. Um, makes Relentless like you. Better. Yeah, it makes people around her better. Um, and she was very good at countering whatever your defense threw at her. Yeah. Love counters. That's like, uh, that's, that's what I do. I love teaching counters. Uh, best food in Corvallis, Seattle, or Spain? Corvallis. Yeah. Really? In Spain? Wow. Spain, restaurants were closed down because we were like in the middle of That's pandemic. That's right. I didn't really, I cooked a lot myself. Yeah. Somebody just joined from Peru, Pan American. Hello. Me, <laughs> Hello. Hi. Brian. That's awesome. All right. Uh, Euro or floater? Euro. Mm. Okay. Quick float, a quick Euro or a, or a slow Euro? Quick. Where do you put the ball when you're, when you're doing the, when you're doing the Euro? Do you like you cup it around? Uh, you know, cup it around or like, yeah, cup it like a football, it, yeah. football yeah, running yeah, yeah, back. Yeah. You like going from left to right or right to left? Left to right. Fish the left left right nice yeah you love that left side I, I you definitely you're right-handed but you but you uh you definitely set things up like with that left-handed jab to to get back to the right i, I love that that's great ambidexterity uh step back three mid-range off a hesitation dribble uh or posting up and turn around baseline jump shot mid-range anywhere you can get any way you can get to the mid-range Love the mid-range. Very underrated. Uh, do you put your left sock on first or your right? Whatever whatever that day feels. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, whatever man. Uh, <laughs> there you go. That's really right. If you only had the following modes of transportation, which would you choose? A giraffe, an elephant, or a donkey? Giraffe. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Tra- oh, yeah, yeah, that's not. Okay, favorite cartoon growing up? is very rapid fire um so many good ones (sighs) (laughs) 
Whoa. Oh my God. Like, yeah. Cut this out. It was different through like each age group. Um, oh, I, I think it was SpongeBob. I, I like SpongeBob a lot or Scooby-Doo. Right. Yeah. Scooby-Doo is, is long running different, different eras. Uh, okay. Favorite show to binge during COVID. You. Oh, you. Mm-hmm. that was interesting. Yeah. Um, would you rather be compelled to high five everyone you meet or give wedgies to anyone in a green shirt? High fives. I'm big <laughs> all my teams, stranger, you name it. <laughs> That's hilarious. Would you rather have to fart loudly every time you have a serious conversation or have to burp every time you kiss someone? Fart. Yeah, fart. <laughs> When I was younger, I, I was lactose, well, I still am, but I didn't know I was lactose intolerant. Oh, man. So I, I would fart like really badly. Uh, my That's sister, crazy. sister would call me farting star, which is pretty embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we've solved the issue. We know it was the culprit, so we're better now. That's hilarious. That's good to know. Uh, would you rather become twice as strong when both of your fingers are stuck in your ears or crawl twice as fast as you can run? crawl twice as fast as you can run kind of like a scary <laughs> movie type feel oh my god that's hilarious uh favorite superhero superwoman cave or treehouse treehouse one of my high you school be- friends had um like the treehouse guy came to her house and put made like a pirates um pirate themed one which is pretty cool that's so cool mm-hmm. i love treehouses uh if you could be anyone for a day who would it be um, Oprah. Oh, interesting. I get to Not give... Ellen. Mm, no. no. Oprah gives away more free stuff, makes more people happy, probably. <laughs> she does give away a lot of free stuff. <laughs> uh, okay, so if you could have three people with you, past or present, uh, who would they be and where would you have dinner? Oh. Um. We'd have dinner at Cheesecake Factory because everybody get what they wanted because it's such a big menu. Um, mm-hmm. And then we would, I'd probably have Albert Einstein, um, mm-hmm. probably Michael Jordan, um, and then Mother Teresa. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. So spirituality is very important to you, obviously. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. cool. Um, what was your favorite song to listen to before games in college? I I didn't. I was one of those people who didn't have a lot of headphones in. I was just oh, like with my thoughts. Or like I'd rather talk to a teammate or talk to somebody uh, versus like blasting music. That's cool. Okay, so are you a? I'm going to explain what each of these are. Yeah. Are you a? Are you a shark, an urchin, a dolphin, or a whale? So a shark is a Type A personality, huh? A lot of sea creatures. Yeah, there a lot of sea creatures. Okay, so shark is type A personality, right? Urchin is analytical, it's probably. Hmm. Dolphin is super social. And a whale, you want to save the world. Oh. Probably a whale or a sea urchin. I was going to say just because of the analytical stuff, sort of a science kind of thing. Yeah. I guess, yeah. Like so is dermatology still the path that you want to go down the road? I'm not sure anymore. Not sure anymore. A lot of it depends on how long a basketball career goes. Because if I play until I'm 30 or 31, I'm not necessarily now sure that I want to go four years medical school, four years residency before I feel like I'm really contributing um, in that scene. Um, So I feel like if I'm like 26, 27, ready to call it with basketball, I feel like I pursued everything I can to my athletic ability and won't have any regrets that way, then probably um, at that point. But if not, I could see myself doing something either with training or like something helping with kids um, or some type of like healthcare, cancer research. Um, so in that, I don't know, a lot of different, a lot of different op- opportunities and options. I think it depends on the timeline. And then um, I think just doing something that a impacts a lot of people in some capacity, a lot of, you can do that in a lot of different jobs and a lot of different career paths um, or like something in healthcare. Well, you'd be an amazing coach. It's, uh, you have uh, an amazing skill set in terms of communication and obviously played it at the highest level. 
uh, and will have, you know, by the time it's all said and done. And um, the game needs more women, you know, honestly, there's, you know, no offense to people like me or, you know, great coaches that are guys, your coach was, was a guy in Corvallis, but um, you know, the game needs more women. So uh, favorite movie. Cars or the Prince. <laughs> I actually knew that, but I, I had to ask because some people didn't know that. <laughs> That's a lesson. Yeah. Or the Prince's Bride, one of those two. Wow. Interesting. That's two really different. different. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Shows your shows your uh, variety there. Uh, okay. So if a movie was being made about you, who would you want to play you? Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah. Good choice. Uh, would you rather know how many basketball it takes to fill up a garage? Or how many golf balls it takes to fill up your car? Basketballs. I just like basketballs more. Yeah. Do you play golf? Very poorly. Uh, but I do play <laughs> golf. Would you try and sell hot chocolate in Florida in the summer or iced coffee in Alaska in the winter? Mm, I'll go with iced coffee. I feel like some people would still like iced coffee. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. It was like no choice, like melting in your hands. <laughs> That's right. Uh, if you're shipwrecked on an island and you had food and water, what t- two items would you take with you besides a phone, tablet, or computer? Bring some books. I bring one book mm. and then. Um, what hmm. book? Ooh. Well, can I bring a Kindle? Man, I think, I think that's like in the same tablet. category. <laughs> yeah. Um, would it be the Bible? Really big. Bible either the bible or like some type of book to help me escape the island uh, so like <laughs> oh there you go um and then also a hammock a hammock wow i love it if you had to have either huge ears or a huge nose which would you choose huge ears i've always had really tiny ears so Interesting. The, opposite. <laughs> the nose would definitely be a little bit uh cumbersome uh, person most admired my dad that's awesome what did your what did your dad do was he a coach he was not not like at any high school or college level but he yeah. coached me growing um like soccer basketball coached my sister as well um he just oh, wow. like worked for a local water district um but admired him just because of how selfless he was for my sister and i growing up no oh, that's cool is your sister at boise state now or she's older yeah, so she, she's at Boise State now, just finishing up her wow. senior year. She graduated um, with her undergrad like a couple weeks ago and then has a track meet this this weekend at the regional track meet. Um, she's running oh, the sick. chase. So 1.86 miles with wow. like a hurdle and like a water barrier jump. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. I love watching the steeplechase. I don't know what other people think about it, but I think it's a fun event to watch. Very interesting. I love it. Very unique. It is. Yeah. yeah, there's strategy to it too. How you get over the the thing that goes over the water and the whole thing. Yeah, it's very interesting. Mm-hmm. That's cool. So wait, are you going? Are you gonna go watch her in person? Are you gonna is it streamed or what? It's stream. Yeah, it's in Texas. Yeah. Go watch it streamed. In Texas. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, if you could change one law today, what would it be? Jaywalking. Really? Yeah, I do it too much. <laughs> Popcorn or candy at the movies? Uh, candy. Sue Bird's your favorite WNBA player? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And MJ, MJ's your favorite NBA player? No, I'd say Ray Allen. Like all time. Just really? Yeah. So Wait. I was a huge. Wow. Yeah. So Sonics fan growing up. And I remember like going when I was younger, watching Ray Allen play and I'd buy oh. like sports cards on eBay and I have like a lot of Ray Allen cards. So. That's crazy. Not GP, huh? No. <laughs> No, he's good too. <laughs> that's crazy. We had Jelani McCoy on the show. He had some interesting stories about the Sonics. That's for sure. Whoa. Uh, okay, so if you could make one rule change in the WNBA, what would it be? Span rosters. Yeah. What about on the court? Any rules? On court rules? As one thing I wish, I don't know if it's a rule, but I wish they would have like a three point line where if you like stepped on it, it would highlight like sh- shine, a, uh, shine a color like red or. Uh, just like light up so people would know without having to look back at the replay each time oh so that so that it would be a two instead of a three Mm -hmm. yep so it saved time wow that's brilliant why don't you uh, you heard it here first why don't you you should definitely patent that that's a great idea Mm because they do it on the backboard right at the buzzer that's true you can do it there too yeah Yeah. wow that's brilliant 
freaking love that. And same thing you could do it with the uh, restricted area. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you're supposed to say, well, what would your rule change be, coach? <laughs> what about you? You got something in mind? Uh, my rule change would be the five second rule off the dribble. Oh, yeah. I think it's crazy. The men, the men have that rule and, and the women don't. Not in the NBA and WNBA, but in, in college for sure. True. So if your plane was crashing, who would the a couple more? Your plane was crashing. You could have one person sitting next to you. Who would it be? My sister. Oh, yeah. Because you go in a couple different re- directions. I've asked this question before, right? You could have someone you hate. You could yeah. have someone that has cancer, or you could have a loved one. So your sister. Yeah. So you guys yeah. are best friends. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's cool. What does she want to do? She wants to go into like sports marketing in some capacity. Oh, cool. Or stay involved with athletics in some way. So like maybe. Um, athletic director or like director of wow. ops, um, but really likes sports and wants to stay connected. That's cool. Dobo would be good. Yeah. Uh, okay. So it's your turn. You get to ask me one, this or that question. This or that. Okay. Yeah. Where do you say, see yourself in five years? Five wow. years. Yeah. Mm, well, I'm probably, my daughter's 10. So if you'd said 10, I would say, probably would move somewhere else and uh, try and get back in the college game. But five years, probably still doing skills training, especially with girls, trying to help them with their games and feel, make them feel empowered and, and get them to understand that it takes time. Just like you talked about, you can't just quit if coach is yelling at you or, you know, um, something doesn't go right or, you know, you have a bad game, you know, you just gotta, you gotta grind it out. There's no substitute for, Hard for work. working hard and training. Yeah. Yeah. If you have a passion for it. You know, that kind of thing. Okay, so if you wanted to see one guest on the show, who would it be? And if you made it happen, would you want to come back and be a guest host on the show? Oh, guest host? Yes. If they make on the show, yeah. And okay, cool. Heard. Okay. Yeah. Okay, make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> Up to me? Yeah, make it happen. That's, that's the gig. You want to, have you met her before? Met her once. Yep. That's cool. That's awesome. All right. Well, it's up to you. If you want to be guest host, that's, that's, that's your gig right there. Yeah. Um, yeah so I know when I first contact you, it, it was, it was not necessarily the best time, but uh, you know, your mindset is definitely, I think in the right place now. And um, I applaud you uh, and anyone that it's not necessarily quitting, right? Like if you decide to go in a different direction, you obviously played at a, an extremely high level and stuff, but you're, you know, still having a passion after all these years to, to pursue your dream. Cause you know, like you, and I'm sure everybody else has been told before, like you got one shot at it and time flies. Like you're already done with college, right? You're going to start your second year as a professional. Like, I'm sure yep. you just, you're just like, wow, where did the time go? And um, you know, that balance that you've had, um, you know, with community service and, and off the court. And, uh, you know, I think it's, I think it's great. You're going in an amazing direction. And like I say to everybody, anything we can do to help, whether it's be a connector, whether it's actually literally help you with your game. Uh, you know, that's, that's what we're about. And, uh, anything we can do, you know, just let us know. And the sports deli has got your back. Hey, thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. It's been fun. Yeah. I liked your, all your different, this or that questions. Well, that's, <laughs> that's cool. Well, usually people that come in get have good karma. Lindsay Gottlieb came in and she got the USC job and Nikki okay. Collin, Nikki Collin came in and she got the Baylor job. So Gee. that's a, hey, that's, keep that's, pretty, going. You know, <laughs> let's keep the street going. All right. People out there listening. I, and I sent some stuff to some WNBA people uh, before we came on. And, and obviously, you know, I'm sure you have your agent doing what they got to do to, you know, um, you know, get you some looks and things like that. So it, it'll happen. You got too much uh, skill and, and uh, you're mentally tough and uh, you're, you're, you're the total package. You just got to refine some things and I'll clean keep things working. up and yep, just keep working, keep grinding and, and it's going to happen. So just uh, believe in yourself, bet, keep betting on yourself and uh, we can't wait to, to see you in that W uniform and we're, we're excited. Shooting for it. Thank you, Mike. All right. Thank sounds you. good. We'll talk soon. Bye. All right. All right. See you later. Bye. Thank you. We can't thank Michaela Pivik enough for joining us today in the Sports Deli. We hope you enjoyed the show. And until next time, for Dr. J and Coach K, remember your voice matters when fighting systemic racism. Please mask up. Remember Black Lives Matter. Stop Asian hate. 
And remember, it takes a village. And until next time, I'm Hootie Hoot. Peace.